The cocoa bear strikes again on Wall Street, setting fear in the eyes of many investors. The question on everyone's mind is, should I buy the dip? In today's episode, we're going to be covering if we should be buying this dip or not. I'm going to show you some very bullish perspectives on what took place today, but I'm also going to kind of give you some of my concerns as well so you can make the best judgment call for yourself. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to my computer. First thing we're looking at here is the fear and greed index. What emotion is driving the market now? I like to look at this because it's a good sentiment indicator. What I find interesting here is it's at extreme fear. Meanwhile, we are only 3% down in the S&P 500 from the all-time high. Let's take a look at the market dashboard. Dow Jones down 725 points. That's 2%, so a big hit down for the industrials. Meanwhile, small caps was not too far off as, long, as well as the NYSE. Small caps were down 1.89%. This right here is the 11 sectors. Notice how every single sector here today is in the red. The one that led the way was consumer staples, more of a defensive play. That to me makes sense as well as healthcare. Utilities was more middle of the pack right next to real estate. But the laggards here is financials and energy. Energy is most likely down because of what's going on with the price of oil. Apparently the OPEC, they're going to be ramping up production and the market has been tanking oil. Doesn't seem like it was investor trade, inside trading at all. I mean, geez, holy moly. Um, it is presenting some opportunities here, which we'll get into probably in other episodes or if you're on my Discord, I'll probably be posting some, uh, so just some hammered down energy charts here uh, soon come. Uh, financials too down. Now this could be also due in part because of the 10 year yield had got completely obliterated today. And when the yields go down, that is not good for financials. When the fi when the yields rise, that is what's good for financials. Why is it good that when long-term yields rise like the 10 and 30, why is that good for the banks? Well, that's good for the banks because the banks, they lend out long-term and they borrow short-term. So when the yields rise, they can make more margin, more revenue. Now, we have a pretty scary day today. People are wondering if we should be buying the dip. There's a lot of fear in the market, but on a bullish perspective, I mean, we have a powerhouse like week ahead of us of earnings. Uh, we just had IBM report. We have Netflix on Tuesday. We got Verizon on Wednesday, JNJ. We have Twitter, Snapchat. So we have just a, just a big week ahead of earnings. And it's hard to believe that they're going to be reporting horribly. So this could be very bullish. However, from a bearish perspective, keep in mind that if the, the market doesn't respond positively with these earnings that come out, that could be a little bit of a warning sign as we're seeing a lot of these big uh, companies break out. For example, Amazon was one of the stocks that broke out and it's currently back testing its breakout point. So if that doesn't hold and it moves back into its area of where it's been consolidating, that could that could make it very difficult for the market to continue pressing higher. So look at the S&P 500. Uh, I'm going to keep showing the megaphone pattern. Uh, this is more of a bearish type uh, broadening wedge pattern here. However, it's still in very bullish context. All the moving averages are sloping up nicely. Yes, we're below the 20-day moving average, but you can see here we tagged the 50-day moving average. Now, this movie is about buying the dip, right? Well, every single time it's bought or it's tagged the 50 day moving average, it reverts itself back super quickly, like very, very quickly. And if it closes below there, the very next day it's back above. So we got to wonder here if this is the start of more distribution to come or if there's a potential opportunity to buy the dip and we're going to quickly get a revert back. And, you know, it's going to end up being one of those turnaround Tuesdays. Well, we'll get into some more charts here that are actually pretty bullish, but just take note that in order to get a little bit more bearish here, we need to see a close below the 50-day moving average, preferably two days. Now, if we start getting below this previous swing low, I'd be a little bit more worried that we have more distribution to come, meaning that we can fall further. But as it stands right now, the bull market is still intact. We're at extreme fear and we've seen just a little bit of a move to the downside. So to me, this could just signal a turning point here very soon heading into this earnings week. Um, 
I'll get more into this in the conclusion section of my plans. Earlier today, I posted this falling wedge and the positive divergence building here on the 15 minute time frame, and you can see a very strong move into close, which just suggest, suggests that we can see some more strength going into tomorrow. So we'll see what it, we'll see what happens overnight, and we'll see what comes about this. I'll wrap this up in the conclusion section about my personal take. Now, from a bearish perspective, we were talking about this specific ratio, the S&P 500 over TLT, and we looked for divergences over the S&P 500. So here's the ratio up top. You have the S&P 500 on the bottom. Now pay attention here. We've been tracking the lower, the lower highs, but yet the S&P 500 has been making higher highs. Okay, now something very interesting happened today. One, the divergence played out, right? We saw the move to the downside. But what I found very interesting here was the low that it printed is a lower low on this ratio versus right here, okay? So if I bring up this, just like negative divergences, there are positive divergences. So I wanted to bring up this chart to show you now there's actually a positive divergence building in this ratio, which can suggest that the S&P 500 will then move higher. What do I mean by a positive divergence? Well, when the ratio puts in a lower low, but the S&P 500 has a higher high, we see moves to the upside. As you can see right here, Leading into the 2020 pandemic, the ratio put in a lower low. Right here, it was relatively flat to slightly higher, and it bounced from those levels. Here as well, you can see the ratio put in a lower low, but the S&P 500 put in a higher low, and then it started moving nicely from that point. So that is something to consider from a bullish perspective. Keep in mind, this is just day one. The S&P 500, if it cracks through this low, then that will invalidate this specific divergence. All right. If you're looking at equal weight, the equal weight is in the yellow, the S&P 500 down there still at the bottom. We actually close at the bottom range of this channel that it's in, and it's been acting as support previously. So perhaps if it doesn't break down from this, that is actually a good sign here for the S&P 500. Now, if it starts breaking down from this channel, I would be a little bit more cautious when it comes to picking individual stocks in your portfolio. Another thing from a bullish perspective is this reading, the NIMO. You can see here it's below minus 80. It's actually almost minus 90, and it hasn't been there for over a year. And that is a big deal because this reading gets, that's a very overextended reading. Now, something to um, kind of consider here when it gets overextended readings, we can see bounces back. Okay, we've seen that here, and we've seen that here. However, when you reach past these levels, these overextended readings, you can get energy bursts. So for example, when we got overextended readings here, this was more of an energy burst where we got continued pressing momentum to the upside. And when we got big energy bursts down here, when it got overextended, we saw big significant moves to the downside. So it is overextended. It does look like it's gonna bounce. However, you just need to proceed cautiously. Let's quickly look at the Dow Jones, and you can see the Dow Jones tapped the lower Bollinger Band, 100-day moving average with precision, and started finding some support from that area. Price percent oscillator is crossed over to bearish, so it does suggest, okay, there could still be some more points of distribution, but it's finding a pivot point. Something to consider here, when you get rallies in the start of bear markets and in bear markets, you get aggressive rallies. So... Just be aware that if you start seeing some aggressive strength out of the gate, like the semiconductors today, which we called out um, in the Discord and also on my Twitter. If you don't follow me there, you can follow me there. But it was such a it was such a powerful move out of the gate because there was a strong move to the downside. So you just need to be aware that those can reverse. We saw the same thing with the IWM. So the NASDAQ 100, let's look at that. We closed below the 20-day moving average. We cracked down through this trend line. We have earnings week coming up. Look at everything from a structural standpoint, we're still very bullish here. So where's an area of support to pay attention to if there's more downside to come? Well, the previous high here and here, it matches up with confluence of the 50 period moving average and the lower Bollinger Band. So if you're looking to go long, tech has been a very strong performer. And if it were to find some more weakness, this would be the place to start getting in because it makes very good sense from a risk first to reward standpoint. Now, keep in mind the price percent oscillator did cross over to bull bearish right here too as well. So it possibly has more downside to come here. But like I said, we, we it, it's still very early in the process as of right now. 
Here's the cues on the 15 minute time frame. It gapped down and it stayed within our supply zone right around this volume shelf. You can see it just doodled around there all day and we saw a little bit of strength come into the end of the day when the PMO crossed over to bullish on the shorter time frame. I can definitely see this trying to come and close this gap. If it comes and closes this gap, just be mindful that that area, the zone 358.50 right here, that's gonna be an area of resistance to watch. And if we get above that, we have the five day and here. So it has a lot of work to do. And this could be the start of a bigger move down, but this could be a shakeout or a potential even island reversal type setup if we get a gap up going into tomorrow. So it's still, like I said, very early in the process. We have one gap below us. So this, if it heads lower, I would start looking at 349 50 to 350 and 50 cents here right in this gap fill to potentially start playing um, a dip as well okay from a bullish perspective the bp ndx also overextended to the downside all right so when it gets these overextended readings you typically get bounces and also to note okay from a bearish perspective when you get oversold readings like this this is where breakdowns occur Okay, we saw the breakdown here. You can see here when it got overextended, 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 we actually found um, uh, support and we started moving higher. So it can doodle around down here for a couple of days, a week, even longer. Just be mindful that it is overextended to the downside. So if you're playing from a contrarian standpoint, we're moving into this overextended territory. It looks like it could be setting itself up for a bounce. Small caps did crack down a very important trend line. So we're going to watch to see how this develops. It went to back test that trend line, got rejected. We do have a pretty big volume spike here, which can suggest that, you know, th th there might be covering here. So for example, if they people have been shorting up here and they've been collecting profits, maybe a little bit there, if it starts getting back up with it, this trend line, you got to think from a short perspective. Okay, if it comes back within this channel, people might say, okay, yeah, I got to cover. I thought it was going to break down further. It's not. And then these whip saws, so you get a you know quick undercut and it comes back. That right there can be both coming in from just not really momentum buyers, but um, you can get shorting shorts to cover, sorry. And then you can have other people buying the dip. And if you kind of put those two and two together, if you get an undercut like this, it could be a very aggressive move to the upside. So yes, it's bearish that it cracked down. It's bearish that's been consolidating for five months. But the fact that if shorts start to cover or you get this sort of whipsaw movement as, by the way, I mean, I would be covering if I was short here a little bit or removing some scales because, I mean, we're below the lower Bollinger Band, right? Uh, we have a big spike in volume and big spikes in volume can be reversal type um, you know, signals. So you can see here a big spike in volume right down here. It moved up a big spike in volume right here. Boom. It moved up. So it's something to consider that this could be just a fake breakdown and was known also as a bear trap. I'm getting on a tangent there. IWM on the 15 minute time frame. not much to report here. Just, just note that it's in short term bearish context, right? The five day moving average is declining. So it has a lot of work to do. I think if we recover 214.50, that could be a very solid move and a good start for the bulls. But just be mindful that if we recoup it, always ask where the price came from. So if we just get a gap up to 226, you know, that's not that bullish to me. That would I, like I wouldn't just buy in right there from a huge like a huge move like that. I would want to see what the price does, how it digests that gain, and then I would start to look for an entry point. All right, the last thing I want to just talk about is the banks. Now the banks got completely hammered because of the ten-year yield. Here is a falling wedge on the BKX. It's the largest twenty-four institutions here in the United States. Positive divergence building. So perhaps the ten-year yield is getting a little overextended to the downside, and now it's going to kind of correct through either price or time. And this could be suggesting that we could be getting a setup to go potentially come fill this gap at around one twenty-one. Now we have a lot of signals that are flashing warning signs still at this particular point in time. So there could be more downside to come. So my plan is to look for individual setups. And when I enter into them, I'm going to have a reduced position size with tighter stop losses. This is going to allow me to get exposure on some of these beaten down names. However, if they get stopped out, I'm not going to be exposed to losing a lot of money. But if it starts going into my favor, I can do what's called pyramiding. And that's just scaling in to an already winning position. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Be safe out there. See you later.